Good afternoon. It is March 29th of 2019. Why are you not in school? It's spring break. Oh, it's spring break. Okay, cool. So, uh, Zach is here with me, and we are going to talk a little bit about what's the most famous phrase from Ghostbusters? What do people shout every time we go out in our costumes? Who are you going to call? Exactly. So, who are you going to call? You're going to call the Ghostbusters. But how? Are you going to call them? No, it's not another video about 555-2368. In, on what are you going to call the Ghostbusters? What would you use? A phone. A phone, exactly right. So um, let's do a little short video about Ghostbusters telephones. Now this was my first Ghostbusters telephone because it's a piece of merchandise. Merchandising? What's that? And I had this uh, in the 80s. Um, it's not ho hooked up at the moment. Uh, but I always thought it was a very cool figural version of the Ghostbusters telephone. I've seen a, a different one where it's flat art. That one's kind of cool, but I just I don't like the fact that they sculpted this guy in 3D because I don't think the Moogly gets enough 3D imagery. All right, so you hold that one. Hold, uh, actually, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like, what are we going to do? And we just pull it right off your chest like your Ghostbusters Iron Man or something. Okay. So then, the next phone prop replica that I got was actually, um, obviously, Janine's phone. Uh, now this would be, from Ghostbusters 1, this would be the phone that uh, she's talking to the hotel manager of the Sedgwick on. So this would be the We Got One phone. Uh, you know, you do, you have, you know, that kind of information. And this one, uh, I saw the information on a, a GB fan's um, uh, forum thread and it was talking about it so I didn't do much more than just find one and, and purchase one. I've never been able to hook it up and get the lights to work because you have to have a multi-line office phone jack to do that. Um, an 80s era one at that. So, But this is uh, this is a nice little piece there. And my friend Pete, uh, Pete Flessis, he actually typed out uh, the little 555-2368 uh, piece of paper for me on his dad's uh, typewriter. So that's a, a nice little cool detail in there. Orion, oh, come here. Yeah. Where are you at? All right, scoot over a little bit that way. And I'll try to scoot it in this way. Okay, put that there. Now this is Orion, who's always out of school. So, doing okay? There we go. After the montage scene of Ghostbusters, Janine's phone changes. And she goes from a one, two, three, four, five, six line phone to a 20 line phone. And that's an intentional nod by the set dressers to suggest how much more successful they are after their first bust at the Sedgwick. So this would be uh, the post montage phone. This is the, be when you see all the lines lit up and she's about to uh, interview Winston and say, you know, uh, do you believe in UFOs, astral projection, that whole scene. And again, it's got the 212-555-2368. Uh, I wasn't sure what the uh, exact area code is for the firehouse, but I chose 212 because um, of a line of dialogue in a Bill Murray directed uh, film, Quick Change. And uh, that's here in area code 212. But this one, I assembled from two phones that were both partially correct uh, in order to get the chrome here. The other one had clear. Uh, and then in order to get this color base and this color phone and uh, then the faceplate was actually textured but it was reversible so I flipped it over to the smooth side and spray painted it to be the right color. These were actually made in Corinth, Mississippi which is about 70 miles from here. Uh, that's where my mom's from but uh, this particular sticker is not real. Uh, I said I built this out of two phones well, uh, the bottom of one had the sticker, which shocked me. I didn't know that these were made there. Uh, and then when I put them together, this was the base that I had to use for this particular phone because of the chrome side over here. And, uh, well, uh, I really wanted that sticker on there, so I took a photo of the sticker on the underside of the other phone and printed it out and affixed it to this one. And then if you think that the cord on the... Uh the first phone uh, is too complicated to plug up in your house. You take it off out of the plastic. All right, hold that up in the shot right there for me. All right, and this cord's, I don't know, it's, it's thick. It's not as thick as this one though. Look, and look at this. Boom, a double plug like that. So yeah, so if I've never been able to test the first one, I definitely cannot test the post montage phone because of how gigantic the uh, the plug would have to be for that. Let's put down your merchandise phone for a second, Zach, and we'll give you this 
went. Now this is the donut phone that you see in Sigourney Weaver's uh, apartment. When Bill Murray calls back to the firehouse and talks to Harold Ramis upstairs, and I think the phone upstairs matches the phone that you saw downstairs earlier in the film. So so these would be three GB1 telephones that we are holding at the moment. So, you're right there. Now this one is very yellowed by age, as most of them are from that era. And the cord, oh my god, this, this phone cord was so kinked up when I got it. So I spent about the first half hour after I unboxed it um, getting the kinks out of that cord. So, anyway. Oh, wonderful. We have to get these two together. So, all right, that's one, two, and three. So here is the new phone to join my collection. And this is the first one that I've done from GB2. Um, I think I will have a faster time opening from the bottom, but let's... Oh, I cut your head off. Oh my Lord. <laughs> no, you do not. No, I did not. No. Everybody loves packing peanuts, don't they? Alright, so this... I, don't need to eat them. I think these are biodegradable. You probably could eat them. It is a rotary phone, which I find quaint. It always reminds me of going to my grandmother's house uh, back in the 70s, because she had a rotary phone. And I would call my parents' house. Uh, and I remember one time I was sick. I needed to be checked out of school, right? And I was sitting there at the school and could not think of my parents' home telephone number. Mm -hmm. Because you're a kid, you never call your home phone, right? But it was a uh, push button phone. And I just couldn't get my brain wrapped around it, you know, and, and, uh, and think of it. So I called my grandmother instead, who was somebody that I called more often. She came and checked me out of school. And then when I went to her house mm -hmm. and I got, oh. no, from oh. uh, uh, dad's mom, uh, from Muscle Shoals. So, uh, he asked, was it the grandmother from Corinth? I went uh, to my grandmother's house, and then on her rotary phone, boom, I could remember my parents' phone number. So it was it was kind of odd. But anyway, this is, uh, what did the red telephones make you think of? Because you both were there. Do y'all remember in Little Shop of Horrors, we had a number with a bunch of red telephones yeah. called Call Back in the Morning? We had an entire box of red telephones, red push-button phones, uh, loaned to us by uh, Donnie Bryan at I Innsworth High School in Nashville. He had done Little Shop in February, and we were doing it in October I hope of 2012. Uh, so we had a whole thing of push-button phones, and I did. I put the uh, the two three six eight five 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 two three six eight as the phone number on one of the phones uh, when we did Little Shop. Nobody could see it but the cast, but I knew it was there. So now. We've got three phones from Ghostbusters 1 and one from Ghostbusters 2. And this is uh, the phone at, do uh, you know what, which scene? No? It is uh, at Raise a Cult. Uh, yeah, midnight on Saturdays. Uh, Raise a Cult. It's 7 o'clock on weekdays, midnight on Saturdays. That phone that he's answering, and I, th I think if you look at the Blu-ray, it is a, a rotary phone. But Lars Carlson recently bought one of these, um, and he identified where he thought the Ray's Occult Bookstore business card was visible in the movie. Um, people have had the, the graphic of it for many years. Jeff Lewis of the Arizona Ghostbusters, he had bought uh, a, a screen-used uh, business card from Ray's Occult Bookstore. But he never could find it in the film, uh, so he very kindly made a scan of that and released it to other fans so that people can print up their own business cards. And Lars was looking through the movie and he saw a frame and he said, I think the business card is on the back of the red telephone. So I'll have to get one of those printed, or I think Lars might have said he was going to mail me one. I can't remember. Somebody, somebody said they were going to send me one. So, anyway, there is my Raise a Cult bookstore red tilt. That looks so much more red on the screen than it does in person. I guess it's because the the light hitting it. Wow, that looks like cherry red on the screen, but it's a very dark red over here. Like maroon. So, yeah, it's it's that's a big yeah. difference. Very maroon, isn't it? Yeah. So, good yeah. word. No, yeah, him from red, yeah, Alabama. Crimson red, like Alabama. He says. Yeah. 
All right, wait. Stand up. Yeah. Uh, Stand up. All yeah, the way in Maybe the he be hate. Maroon is Mississippi State. All right, stand all the way up in the chair. He's actually got Alabama sweats on right now. That's how obsessed he is with Alabama. So that'd be a good shot. That is our Ghostbusters telephone video. Let's see if we can put all of these in the frame in the same <laughs> shot. I'm dropping one. Oh no, we're off the hook. <laughs> Most videos of mine are off the chain. This one's off the hook. All right, so thank you for watching. Cool. All right, guys, thanks for helping out. I think that'll turn into a good one.